My name is Claire Bogard, and my husband and I and our children moved to Pasadena in the early 1970s. I became involved in Pasadena Heritage in the mid-1970s after working on some city issues, and I then proceeded to be the second executive director of Pasadena Heritage and remained working with the organization until the early 90s. But I continue to volunteer and help out whenever need be. I'm Bill Ellinger. I uh, had lived in Pasadena until the mid-60s, returning to Pasadena in 1974 with my family. And shortly after that, uh, when the group coalesced to become Pasadena Heritage, I was one of the founding board members and served on the board longer than anyone else. I'm Sue Mossman, and I'm the current executive director of Pasadena Heritage, but have been with the organization since almost its founding when my family moved to Pasadena and bought our old historic home and looked for friends and those who could help us to fix it and discovered Pasadena Heritage. So I started as a volunteer and have now worked for the organization for 33 of its 35 years. Pasadena in the 1970s was a very different city from what we know today. The communication on the part of the community in City Hall was practically non-existent unless you were part of sort of the old boys network, which is really what was running Pasadena in those days. The Chamber of Commerce, the City, Count, the city Board of Directors, as they were called then, and the Board of Realtors all worked together as a group, and they all had a vision of, of bringing Pasadena into a new environment that of, 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 of a major headquarter city. They wanted to build a very large interchange in the downtown area, a freeway interchange, some of which has actually been built. And they also wanted to build large corporate headquarters similar to the Parsons Company, which we, of course we still have adjacent to old Pasadena. And in addition, many of the, the decisions were made um, really apart from the public uh, forum and city council members would meet uh, at the Overland Club as it was known, make a lot of decisions there and then go to the city council or the Pasadena Redevelopment Agency which is another uh, powerful uh, form of city government and those decisions were made before they ever got to the meetings. So there was little input and little interaction with the community. So it was a very different period in to of time. Coming from a neighborhood background, which was my introduction to Pasadena, there were two things that we caught on to early on after moving here. The first one was taking down a huge chunk of the original downtown area to build a shopping mall, the Plaza Pasadena, which had alarmed a number of residents and architecturally was questionable and conceptually was questionable because it took a traditional downtown environment with sidewalk activity and openings to the street and created an interiorly focused shopping mall, which was typical redevelopment strategy of the 60s and 70s, but was very foreign to Pasadena. And the other thing was that the zoning in all the neighborhoods surrounding the downtown had been elevated to encourage apartments and condominiums to be built which meant that the erosion of those early neighborhoods was really accelerating in those days. And those of us who moved here because we loved the old houses and we loved the old neighborhoods saw this looming growth of apartment and condominium construction coming right down the pike in our direction. So neighborhoods were getting organized, creating associations, and beginning to be aware that we could lose the very things that we moved here um, to admire and be part of with this strategy to remake Pasadena as a corporate headquarters. I have a slightly different perspective than Claire and Sue because I moved to Pasadena in the mid-60s. So I remember that time very fondly. Uh, old Pasadena, of course, was uh, had been criticized by those who wanted to demolish it as being shabby and gritty and shady and number of other pejorative adjectives, but it was that kind of environment that really was attractive and appealing to me. The 
fact that I then left Pasadena and lived and worked in the Middle East for a number of years, and then upon returning found that there had been a great loss, uh, even by then, of historic structures and uh, impacts, negative impacts on historic neighborhoods, it was a kind of reverse cultural shock for me, uh, leaving a place which I was very fond of and then coming back and finding it already starting to be frayed, particularly in regard to the historic elements would make Pasadena so special.